Hi, this is Dave Valenticonis, North American Tactical Services Manager for Seaman, and I would like to welcome you to this short presentation. The focus of this presentation is going to be on cabling and the connectivity aspect for delivering AV communications over balanced twisted pair structured cabling systems. For those who are already accustomed to designing and installing structured cabling for data and voice applications, this content will be familiar, although I expect that the particulars of product selection will be valuable. For those who have typically support AV applications with point-to-point -point connections, this will be a good introduction to a standards-based approach for running AV applications over twisted pair cabling. So let's get started. Currently, AV systems operate over a wide range of cables and connectors, so is unable to realize the benefits of operation over a single unified infrastructure. A fundamental issue has been a lack of standards inside the AV industry. Audio connectors and video connectors are electrical or optical connectors that carrying audio and video, video signals. Uh, audio interfaces and video interfaces define physical parameters and interpretation of signals, but this lack of interoperability has been the norm in the AV industry for years. As this has been the traditional approach in AV, these connectors have been on the end of a mass point-to-point -point cable connections rather than taking a structured cabling approach like many voice and data customers have benefited from for years. IT staff are, are very familiar with structured cabling solutions, which allows them to easily configure and reconfigure the network via patching changes when required, and the change management process inside the organization is also well-defined. With a traditional AV approach, you have to deal with a myriad of existing cables associated with these different applications and locations. If they are adding additional rooms, they will need to consider if the original equipment can scale and if there will be any compatibility issues with the new equipment. Uh, they will typically need to engage you know, a programmer to accomplish any basic changes, which by design have limited scalability. Equipment in the communications protocols that AV manufacturers use are typically proprietary. This ensures that the client isn't able to mix and match vendors' products, which limits their ability to manage costs as they are typically locked into a single vendor. Having a traditional AV network creates further challenges for IT on how to ensure they're able to transition to newer technologies as they will be relying on the manufacturer integrator for any upgrade advice. Powering AV devices using a traditional design approach currently requires local power sources. We know with Ethernet switches, they can support power over Ethernet and are capable of supporting up to 90 watts of power. This level of power will enable greater potential to provide network powering of current and future AV end devices. From the previous slide, we now understand some of the challenges that using a traditional point-to-point -point style AV solutions pose. Networked AV, also known as AV over IP or audiovisual over internet protocol, is the transmission of audiovisual data over a network, for example, a WAN, a wide area network, local area network, or the internet. In comparison to traditional AV environments, AV over IP refers to the use of standard network equipment to switch and transmit video and audio. Standard Ethernet-based switches are widely available and do not require any custom hardware configurations. This is one of the reasons that on a per-port basis, AV over IP is dramatically lower than traditional AV switching platforms. Ethernet ports are also fully bi-directional, so each port may be treated as an AV input or an AV output. Input-output ports of custom AV switches are dedicated as either input or output, usually with an equal input-to-output ratio on the chassis. This commonly results in many unused ports. Transporting AV signals using standards-based Ethernet switching creates a singular, flexible, and scalable network architecture that is easily understood and maintained by the IT department. The concept of supporting AV over twisted pair cabling has been around for some time, more than a decade. Uh, what's truly exciting now is evidenced by the various delivery options shown here on the slide is that the accelerated adoption coupled with the fact that we now have power over Ethernet or PoE standards today that we did not have five to ten years ago for delivering more power along with video, audio, data, and control. This is now the perfect time to see AV over the IT infrastructure really take off. For those of us in the industry who commonly speak to the benefits of convergence within the enterprise space, the barriers are coming down and we expect to see this trend continue. Specifically to AV, we need to acknowledge that we really just touched the surface of the market. One thing that we do know is that a bandwidth of 10 gigabits per second is required for these applications to support 4K ultra high definition video. The most recent and the most protocol industry professionals see this as the most disruptive technology. And the one that will ultimately pave the way for fully converged AV over IP is software defined video over Ethernet or SDVOE. SDVOE uses off-the-shelf Ethernet switches, thus offering substantial cost savings and greater system flexibility and scalability over traditional approaches. Introduced in 2017, software-defined video over Ethernet, uh, supporting uncompressed 4K video, audio, and control that aims to offer greater saving flexibility and scalability compared to traditional AV. It uses the full seven-layer OSI model and leverages what we in the IT industry already reuse for transmitting data, standards-based network cabling. Ethernet, TCP IP, and low latency switching. It also eliminates the use of AV video matrix switches, which typically cost about 90% more per port than a standard Ethernet switch. 
As illustrated in this comparison table, proper support of 4K transmission is expected to require 10 gigabits per second transmission. In addition, with remote powering options increasing, the, the ideal infrastructure will be required to support high performance and high power, specifically Category 6A or higher performance to support full 100 meter 10 gigabit per second transmission and shielded construction to optimize heat dissipation associated with remote powering. And I will, I will be highlighting the, the advantage of this approach as we move forward. Just like those used in the AV world, standards exist for structured cabling to ensure an infrastructure is specified and installed to support a wide range of current and future applications. In North America and some other parts of the world, ANSI TIA standards apply. For the balance of the world, ISO IEC standards are followed. Globally, ANSI BICSI standards provide best practices suitable for any location. Of key importance here, which all standards specify compliance to, is the length and number of connections allowed. The maximum length of the permanently installed or permanent link cabling is limited to 90 meters or 295 feet. This allows up to 10 meters or 33 feet of total cordage for an overall channel length of 100 meters or 328 feet. In conjunction with length, up to four connection points are allowed. Standards do support various configurations or topologies, a couple of which we'll discuss on the next couple slides here, uh, including an option for terminating directly to a modular plug. One very important consideration is that the use of point-to-point -point cabling is not allowed within industry cabling standards due to the lack of flexibility and ultimately limited capability to reuse or repurpose the cabling for alternate or future applications. Quite frankly, years of point-to-point, -point, often proprietary cabling is what led to the development of structured cabling systems, which are intended to provide an, an open infrastructure capable of supporting multiple applications. The most common configuration for structured cabling systems is a two-connector model, where there is a patch panel in the telecommunications room and an outlet adjacent to the device with a patch cord at each end. However, to allow greater flexibility and to simplify moves, adds, and changes, a zone enclosure can be added or introduced in which the permanent cabling is installed between the telecommunications room and the zone enclosure, and then changes are limited to a much smaller and less disruptive scope between the zone enclosure and device outlets only. Note that in addition to the cable itself, all connectivity such as outlets, housings, and enclosures must be plenum rated if located within an air handling space. A relatively new topology is the Modular Plug Terminated Link, or MPTL. In this instance, the outlet at the end device is replaced with a modular plug that connects directly to the device. This topology is limited to devices that are fixed, fixed in place, as it, as it limits relocation or repurposing of the cabling run if any changes occur or any relocation of the device occurs. Similar to the topology we showed previously, a zone enclosure can still be added uh, to provide a greater level of flexibility, which is especially important when implementing MPTL topologies. Note that when implementing an MPTL with higher performance cabling, a higher performance plug is required. Siemens Z-Plug is the industry's shortest Category 6A field terminated plug and can be used for both unshielded and shielded applications. Terminating similar to a Category 6A outlet for easy intuitive termination, it's ideal for deployment for a number of applications including Wi-Fi, security, AV, and other building auto automation system types of applications. As we will be mentioning shielded cabling in the upcoming slides, it's a good idea to provide a brief overview of the various shielded constructions that are available in the market today. To start with, uh, FUTP cables have an overall foil surrounding unshielded twisted pairs. U slash FTP cables do not have an overall shield, but have a foil around each individual twisted pair. F slash FTP cables have an overall foil in addition to a foil around each individual pair. And S slash FTP cables have an overall braid in addition to a foil around each individual pair. Now, as you can see here, as the category increases, so does the size of the conductor gauge. Keep in mind that when the delay skew is too high, it can result in increased bit error rates and jittery pictures for high-res RGB video signals where each color is sent down a separate pair. Our Category 7A fully shielded SFTP cable exhibits exceptional delay skew, making it ideal for video applications. That is why Crestron and others have standardized on Category 7A for RGB video signals. So why Category 6A or higher for support of AV over IP? 
Quite simply, it checks all the boxes needed for supporting AV over IP applications. Full 10 gigabit per second capability to support ultra high definition video, full 100 meter length to support all industry standard topologies, optimal heat dissipation when operating PoE or power over HD based heat powering technologies, and it's the optimal media for not only supporting AV over IP, but other IP applications such as LAN, Wi-Fi, security, DAS, PoE lighting, and other building automation systems to get a single unified platform of convergence. So we, we've kind of covered why Category 6A, but why shielded cable for AV? Well, transmission of high dynamic range or HDR video signals at these frequencies means they're also susceptible to alien crosstalk, which is crosstalk or noise between adjacent cables. Uh, when dealing with alien crosstalk, we know that it cannot be effectively predicted and therefore cannot be reduced or eliminated through noise cancellation techniques within the active equipment. It can only be controlled through installation of proper cable and connectivity. In addition, because of the higher speeds, alien crosstalk is a big concern with AV applications wherever multiple cables are bundled together. Shielded cabling offers the resistance required. In fact, AV solution providers like AMX and Extron recommend the use of shielded Category 6A or 7A cable for ultra-high definition video transmission. Fortunately, Siemens has been a long-standing advocate for shielded cabling systems. We know that our shielded systems offer optimal resistance to alien crosstalk as the shield prevents alien crosstalk from affecting you know, adjacent cables. So now that we've looked at a few key applications, it's important to consider that all of these applications and more are using remote powering to power their devices, which is a key reason for deploying Category 6A shielded cabling at a minimum. With the release of the IEEE 802.3 BT Power over Ethernet or PoE standard in 2018, we now have five different levels of remote powering, ranging from 15 watts up to 90 watts for PoE and 100 watts for Power over HD based T, with the higher wattages capable of supporting TVs, digital displays, and even desktop computers. So it's easy to see how the advancements in PoE have opened up the opportunities for more devices than ever to be powered over network cabling. While this is good news, there are some considerations you need to be aware of. When DC power is delivered over the cabling to end devices, heat builds up, which is known as heat rise. This is even more of a concern within cable bundles because the heat cannot dissipate from the cables in the center of the bundle. This temperature rise increases insertion loss, which is signal loss, and adversely impacts transmission performance. So with higher power type 3 and type 4 PoE, heat rise in bundles is more of a concern, which is why ISO, IEC, TIA, and the National Electric Code, or NEC, in the United States all have guidelines for reducing bundle size in 60 watt uh, higher uh, higher than 60 watt PoE uh, based on gauge size, operating temperature, and conductor ampacity. To offset insertion loss caused by heat buildup, overall channel length may need to be reduced to offset increased insertion loss resulting from higher operating temperature. This is known as length derating in industry standards. To prevent heat buildup within cable bundles, the size of the bundles may also need to be reduced. There are some key cable features and characteristics that result in less heat rise and therefore less derating and bundling restrictions. First, larger conductor gauges exhibit less heat rise, which is why Category 6A and 7A exhibit less temperature rise than, say, Category 5E or 6. Overall, uh, secondly, overall, any shielded cabling offers better heat dissipation. In fact, shielded cables offer exhibit, I should say, half of the heat buildup of UTP. And finally, cables with a higher operating temperature like Siemens 75 degrees C rated category 6A and 7A cables are more thermally stable and offer better heat dissipation. As shown here in this graph, shielded cables exhibit superior heat dissipation, which results in lower temperature rise. In fact, our category 7A fully shielded cables do not require any length derating to provide full support of 10 gigabit per second applications at elevated temperatures up to 70 degrees C or 158 degrees Fahrenheit. Some of the implications of remote powering currents used in PoE applications include the fact that contact arcing can occur when unmating a connection with PoE being delivered, referred to as unmating under load. The arcing can cause erosion of the contacts as shown in this image of contact erosion over time. When the erosion occurs in the area of the final mated position on the jack or plug contacts, it can adversely affect connecting hardware reliability. Thankfully, this is not an issue with our crown jack contact geometry features on our Siemens Max, ZMAX, and Terra jacks. So let's take a quick glance at what industry standards recommend. TIA and ISO IEC recommend Category 6A for all new installations, including healthcare, data centers, commercial buildings, and educational facilities in preparation for 10 gigabit per second application support. At this point, Nobody should be deploying Category 5E or 6 for new installations. 
TIA and ISO IEC also recommend shielded cabling for heat dissipation and noise immunity. To remind your customers who are running higher power PoE or are planning to, which most probably will over the lifetime of their cabling system, and any customers dealing with noisy environments, that this is the ideal medium. So let's take a look through the key points for this presentation. Key points to take away. First of all, only Category 6A or higher cabling will support all AV deployment options over the full 100 meters for twisted pair applications. Secondly, industry standards, structured cabling industry standards specifically, should be followed for any AV over twisted pair application. So as a reminder, point-to-point -point connections are not standards compliant or not recognized. But the MPTL, or the Modular Plug Terminated Link Configuration, is available for devices that are expected to be fixed and not be relocated. For two connector or three connector or MPTL configurations, zone cabling will provide a better platform to support moves, adds, and changes moving forward as it limits the activity of work between the zone cabling enclosure and the end device. Now also, high performance category 6A or higher shielded cable is recommended as the best choice for AV applications due to its 10 gigabit per second capability for transmission performance, full 100 meter reach, and thermal stability when operating using remote powered applications such as PoE or power over HD base T. And finally, select connectivity that has jack contact geometry that places the arcing damage away from the critical mated position for the long-term reliability as we illustrated on the previous slide that is something uh, inherently incorporated into Siemens Max, CMAX and Terra jacks. Finally, Seaman has a number of resources available to learn more about the topics that we've discussed today, and also to keep current on industry and associated industry standards. So keep in mind these reference points for links. Uh, they can also, these can all be found from the main website at www.seaman.com. So that wraps up this session, and I want to thank you for the time and the opportunity to present today. I hope this information will prove helpful as the AV industry navigates its way towards future IP convergence.